Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Cancio and I am the Executive Director for Chamber South and we are back with another episode of Chamber South Spotlight. We're so excited to have Fadi here today. She is our President and CEO of Parent to Parent of Miami and we're getting to know a little bit more of its history and just her story and everything that's coming up with Parent to Parent. Hi Fadi. Hi Melissa. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for having <laughs> me back. I appreciate it. Of course. I feel like we had such a great conversation last time that now we get to have more conversations with what's coming now for the future and getting to know parent to parent on a more deeper level. Sounds good. <laughs> what's something new and exciting that you just want to start off with? Well, new and excited is that uh, we are gearing up for our 20th Journey of Dreams, which is our annual fundraiser for Parent to Parent of Miami. And we are excited because it is 20th. I mean, it's it's an, it's amazing. It's a big number. Yeah, it's a milestone. So it's your we're roaring happy. 20s. We are doing roaring 20s. So we're hoping that it's going to be a fun event again. You know, it's going to be November 16th. And we're excited because it is. It's an important fundraiser for us. It's the major one that we do each year in order to raise the funds that we need to continue working with our amazing families and their kids with disabilities. So it's important for us. Definitely. Perfect. So you just segued into what Parent to Parent was, and we'll come back to the rest of the event to make sure we got all the nitty gritty and all the goods. That's good. So Parent to Parent as a whole, what is it in? What does it mean to you in Miami? I know there's different locations nationwide. So how many locations do you have? What does that look like that we can help support Parent to Parent? All right. So well, for us here, we are Parent to Parent of Miami. So that means that we specifically help the families here in Miami-Dade County. We are federally funded through the Office of Special Education Programs. And so and, and along here on, uh, locally through the Children's Trust. Um, and we are what is considered a community parent resource center. So we are a resource center for parents who have kids with disabilities. And for us, we are lucky to be able to just dig in and help the family specifically, like I said, from Miami-Dade County. So like us, there are other parent centers in the nation. And uh, some are able to work with a small area like we do here. And others are uh, bigger centers that can work with a lot of states. So um, there is funding through special education law. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act mm. actually has funding for parent centers. So that's how we started off. Um, our first big grant came from OSEP um, back in 1998, and we are lucky and work really hard to keep it. And then now, you know, we were able to expand more our services with um, funding through the Children's Trust which we have had since 2006. So, Melissa, it's a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work that happens, but we try to help. We help about 1,500 families each year. So you got to think it's 1,500 kids plus because a lot of families have multiple yeah. children who may need help with our services. So, yeah, so and, and, it's, and it's a great, um, you know, the parent centers came about because uh, you had parents that were fighting for that inclusion piece of kids with disabilities in the schools. We wanted to have students that had disabilities to have the same opportunities as yeah. the regular students, which they should. And so, you know, that's a big piece that we still uh, work really hard to make sure that the students here in Miami-Dade County who may have a disability, that they have the services, the supports, you know, that they need so that they can be successful. And for us, we work directly with their families. So we're teaching the parents, you know, their rights and their children's rights and, and what, you know, can be accomplished. So it's, it's a big task. That's why, you know, one of our um, hashtags is, you know, dream big for kids with disabilities, because we do. We want to help our parents dream big for their children. And we want those kids to have really amazing dreams like anybody else. I love that. I feel like I'm going to get teary eyed and <laughs> just trying. But I, I love that there's a lot of incorporation with the Miami and feeling included and having that sensibility because I know with everything that's been going on in the world, there's so much that even still parent to parent is striving and continuing to the success of their goals and everything that's coming in. So I love yeah. that. Fadi yeah. is leading it. Yeah. <laughs> and all know, I have an amazing team at the office. We are 18 on staff, so we're not huge. But, you know, everybody is there with a heart. You know, I always yeah. like to let people know there's always a heart in our logo. And it really is part of our work. Part of the work is, you know, sharing that love. You know, the majority of us are parents, Melissa, who have kids with disabilities, different ages, different, age, you know, uh, disabilities. But when we're helping another parent, 
you know, there's a bond that really just forms right away. And yeah. that's the part that's really important. That why That's why it's so important to have that parent-to-parent piece. It's a peer-to-peer model of support where, you know, we have chosen um, because of, you know, our children's needs, we have had to adapt, right? We have had to adapt our careers, um, how we go about and face life. And, you know, we have been able to champion for our kids and we want that for other families. So a lot of the staff have changed their, you know, their future goals so that they can go ahead and help their kids. And so, you know, they get specialized training and we, you know, help the parents that are new to the game, you know, find their journey, you know, find their path, help their kids be successful, realize that there's joy. You know, yeah. it's hard to hear that a child has a disability, if you're going to be honest. You know, it's, it's difficult to hear. It's not what you expect. But, you know, there's a, there's a new normal that needs to be, you know, established. You need to, to find your new voice. And we want parents to find their voice. And we want our kids to find their voices, you know. So inclusion is really important. We want our society, our community around them to embrace you know, those that might be, you know, um, different in their abilities. Just because you're a little different doesn't mean that you can't. And so we want to see, you know, the potential that's in everyone because sometimes, you know, this young child that might have a lot of limitations really can grow up to be, you know, exceptionally talented. And we want, you know, everyone to, to, to thrive and to find that inner voice. And as they grow up, our kids to be able to be, you know, self-advocates and, and be included in all that they want to do in school and after school, you know, in the summers and for their future goals, you know, college, employment. Have yeah. you ever considered being a motivational speaker? <laughs> <laughs> I motivate myself every day, so trust me. But it's it's really important. It's yeah. really important because, you know, at, at the beginning, sometimes our parents feel very lost. Mm -hmm. They feel very lost. And it can be a lonely place because uh, you feel this is just for you, maybe for you and your family. But you have to realize there is a huge network of support that can be out there. There are other families that are have grown, that are thriving, you know, that are doing well. And that's really how the model started. So if I can take you back, I mean, we've been in the community now more for like almost 37 years now. And it really started as a group of parents that just, you know, wanted to uh, get together, to, you know, help each other out, to help other parents. Yeah. And it started with that whole parent movement nationwide, actually. And and so luckily here, you know, we had a really good core of parents that got together, that incorporated us, that started through and then just started helping other parents from their kitchen tables, really, you know. And then we just kept growing and growing. And so it's my hope that I can continue to, to lead an organization that means a lot to me, that has been in the community for a long time, to help, you know, other parents and to help it grow, you know. So we'll see what the, you know, the next future can bring for us. I love that you brought in the parent-to-parent -parent why and kind of gave that synopsis because I feel like a lot of people just don't know and it's so important to have that knowledge even so even if you don't have a child's disability but you know someone that does you can always refer them and bring them in mm -hmm. and to have that that treatment aspect that you know what the day-to-day -day looks like and whatnot yeah so what does a day in the life look like for someone going into parent to parent how do they reach out is does it if they relocated what does that look like so they can kind of get in tune with what parent to parent is yeah so i mean our parents come from um you know they can just reach out by giving us a call at the office um, sometimes they find us of course on google and just um, they can um, you know do an intake online if that's what they want and we'll give them a call later you know so the referral process itself it's quite easy we work with a lot of community agencies a lot of professionals therapy centers you name it the school system that are always referring families to us because the need is great. The need is really great. And when you think that we work with 1,500 families, it's a lot. But oh my gosh, you have so much more, right? You have so many more families that, that can be helped. So it's one of those things where, you know, anybody can just give us a call and say, um, you know, my child has been recently diagnosed or, you know, they're struggling in school and I really don't know what to do. Nobody's listening to me. And we help them through the process. So is it something that they have to um, possibly, um, you know, start at school and request a formal evaluation? We show them, you know, how to 
do it? What are the steps? What to anticipate? You know, what information to gather? Or it could be a little child whose parents might be concerned. So we can start a lot of times with uh, parents that don't have a formal diagnosis for their child. And we can help on the process of, of where they need to go and how to access services to see is this something that they have to um, deal with. And then we help them if that is the case, because you do, you start collecting a lot of um, professionals along the way, a lot of specialists if there's medical care involved, and, and you navigate systems that parents don't typically have to navigate. So we become, you know, social workers and coordinators and, you know, um, financial people that that is not um, what the typical parent might have to encounter. And, you know, we're here, like I said, in Miami-Dade County, but if we have a family that's moving away, we try to get them to their uh, either local or their state um, parent center so that they can start anticipating what are the changes. Because even though there is this federal law for special education and disabilities, um, it changes um, state to state and even changes to each um, area school system. So we're really helping them trying to see, you know, what might be those changes and but how they can be, um, you know, networked in to other parents to continue their support system. Yeah, it's a lot in the day to day of parent yeah. to parent. So we're doing that, but we're doing trainings for families. You know, we're we're doing one on one meetings. We're going to them to their school meetings. You know, sometimes these school meetings are you know, something so brand new to the families they don't understand. Or maybe communication has really, you know, not been the best between the parent and the uh, school administration. Mm -hmm. And we hope to be there to be able to bridge, you know, that need okay. and help them out. So, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a lot to do. But like I said, it's done um, with a lot of heart for sure. I mean, like that, it, it, it just gets you to a different notion of wanting to feel like you, you really feel like I'm living vicariously through you and through your day. So in your term, I know you recently started, which feels like you've been in the role for a long time. What is one goal that you've been able to accomplish and kind of make you've been able to see the beginning, the middle and just kind of navigating what it looks like now for with the growth of the organization? Well, one of the nice things has been to be able to grow our journey of dreams. So that was good. And I hope to continue growing it because it's such an important piece for us. Um, one of the things that I mean, I'm lucky to have someone on staff who helps me with grant writing. So we have secured some extra grants that help us, for example, with financial planning for families that we can offer free of charge because it's really expensive. So we've been able to do a program with Simply Healthcare um, with um, a financial planning advisors that came in and provided some really nice, um, important topics for as our kids get older. You know, there's this need for um, assistance and government programs and benefits that a lot of families don't know about, but it's required. You know, sometimes our kids do require a lifetime of support. So, you know, we were able to bring them in, share that important information, and then be able to select families that are being provided financial um, assistance and um, with um, for their, their future planning with um, um, this group from Coastal Wealth from Mass Mutual, and they're amazing. So that's one of the nice things that we've been able to do this year. And we hope to start a, a new project for, um, for a um, safety program for uh, as kids get become young adults for um, how to deal and interact with the police. So that's something that's soon to be. Um, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be out there um, in the next few months. And I think that's going to be really important because it is an issue. You know, I think that our youth um, may not have the full understanding of how their actions can be um, seen by others. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a big push for police training in order to um, to understand that when the police are out there, they may be dealing with an individual that may not understand fully and sometimes, you know, when our young adults react to unknown situations, they might, um, you know, act inappropriately. They may not be asking, answering questions, right? And so luckily, there has been a big push by many different police departments to be able to, um, you know, learn and have that extra training to be aware that 
maybe someone's reacting not according, but it could be because of a disability. Yeah. So we can scale down versus things get heated up. So I'm hoping that very soon we can connect and be able to do a training where we are doing it on the parent perspective, right? Having the parents understand what the needs are so they can help their youth and work with the youth for them to have this specialized training on maybe the do's and don'ts as they are approached by, you know, officers and so forth so that again it's to enhance that training component so um stay tuned i'm hoping to get that out in the next two months actually very we'll incredible work. yeah 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 wow so, and to cover in the community like that there's so many officers that are always just willing to mm -hmm. help and and feel the the need for the community to mm -hmm. to be incorporated in that. i can't wait yeah. to see what that yeah. looks like for yeah. you. yeah yeah no I'm, we're we're excited we, we got this um extra funding again through simply healthcare which you know we're very excited that they um see um the the need that's out there for our disability community and how we can work one-on-one -on -one with our families so we're hoping to be able to work with a few um, community partners and put together this great training so that we can open it up. And like I said, you know, have the youth understand and go yeah. through those practice runs and, you know, do that training so that hopefully between the citizens and then the officers, we can get to a better place for everyone, make it a little safer. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's, I find you inspire me every day. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Thank you. <laughs> so going back to now your basis on November's event, what is it? Is that something that has been just in the plan, in the works for years to come? I know 20 years is a huge step. So is there something that you want to be able to share that other people might not know or give us like a little inside secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, it started with a need that we needed to, you know, have money in the bank to pay for our, even though we're grant funded, you still have to have money in the bank. Love you know, the people don't realize, yeah, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, sometimes, you know, there's a misconception that just because you receive grant money that you're, you're, you're set, you're set. right? Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that your grant funders don't just give you that money up front, right? Yeah. You typically have to outlay the money and then you get reimbursed for these very specific deliverables, right? You say that you're going to do certain, you're going to do ABC, and you deliver, and then the funders reimburse you. So the, you have to front a lot of money. And as we grow, you know, the cost for our organization month to month has always grown. So mm -hmm. um, it is, like I said, it's an important event because we do need to, you know, have that money available um, sometimes reimbursement process do take a long time. So there's a there's a business component of the nonprofit, right? You do the good work, but you have that component. So, you know, it's an important piece. And I think that, you know, for me, the message, Melissa, is to have to find other organizations that are out there, you know, that we can find businesses that can see the value in the work that we do that say you know what i do want to support your journey of dreams i do want to become a sponsor you know i want to be at that event so that we can share you can see the the good things that are you know that are happening with our children with our families you know every all the milestones that they can actually accomplish so for us it's important to find you know those businesses that will say yes to our mission work because it's really important for us to grow um, for yes the fundraising component but also so that it's a way of saying yes to the families we know that you need help and we are here and available to help you so yes I would love to have you know um, businesses come forward to say we'll help you sponsor your event and be there. You know, we hope to have our, uh, we have a youth engagement council, which um, is a group of about 10 to 15 youth with disabilities. Yeah. And they're getting together and going out into the community and they're doing, you know, get togethers. Um, and they're really enjoying it. They're finding friendships, which at times is hard to, you know, to make. And so they'll be there. They'll be sharing their experiences, um, why it's important to have it. You know, some are saying, you know, this is my first time going out to a movie with friends. And Aww. it's so cool to have, right? So, yeah. so many different angles to really think about. So, you know, with our, with our event, you know, again, it's our 20th. It's, you know, it's a big event. Um, it's, I hope to keep growing it. I hope to find partners out there 
that will say yes to us, that will help us um, be able to expand what we can do with our families. You know, there's so much need, you know, the the day to day. We could only chip away at, um, at the needs of our families because we do have a high need population in the county. The majority of the families we serve are, fa- are Hispanic families that um, come in a lot of times from very different countries uh, to systems they don't understand. And so we're helping our local families really find their path. So it's, uh, you know, our journey of dreams helps us in that piece. So we're hoping for, it's always been a fun night, uh, not just because I say so, you know, I always get some really <laughs> great feedback on, on an evening. It's a very... Um, very authentic night. Um, I can't say who our two honorees will be yet because I'm hoping to contact them later today, actually, to let them know. But uh, we do honor two great um, people. And one of them is actually going to be a a big um, area organization that helps and provides a lot of services to um to the disability community and that is part of the event too is is sharing you know so um stay tuned you know for for a big announcement as well on that piece yeah sounds like we'll find out with everyone else <laughs> yeah yeah you will it'll be a big uh, big suspense. announcement that's for sure yeah yeah i can't say it yet because i have you know but um you know that's part of the night part of the night is also recognizing um those that are out there making a good impact um, in the lives of, of people with disabilities and, you know, in our community in general. Yeah. That's pretty impressive that you have every, all the things of information and understanding of, and bringing in that story piece about parent to parent. That's so important when it comes to the organization. And I see the passion in you and I'm just like, tell me more, just tell me more how I can get involved. So when someone comes in and they want to be a part of the organization or want, want to help in some way, what are some ways that you think would be most helpful to you in the organization? Well, different ways. I always say that, you know, we're always looking for, let's say, new board members that feel that they can help us by becoming a board of trustee member. And so by bylaws, we have to be majority of parents of children with disabilities, but we're looking for committee members that that may want to to help us in that aspect. Um, I always say you can be just an ambassador, you know, you can just be out there sharing for other other people who need our help to say, hey, I just heard about Parent to Parent of Miami. I know you can, you know, just give them a call and they'll start helping you out Mm -hmm. or say, you know what, I, you know, let me bring this up to people within my, you know, my organization, you know, other people who might say, you know, we're looking for that new organization to support and bring our name into, you know, throw our name into the hat, right? Mm-hmm. So many different ways. Sometimes we have events where we need volunteers. So, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, if 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 anyone feels they want to help us out, they can just reach out to me. And I'm always, you know, happy to, to see how it can work. You know, sometimes the best work um, comes at a very, um, the support comes at a very natural way of just talking, seeing what, what ideas might, might come up with. You know, sometimes you might have places that, you know, their staff, you know, uh, disability is it, it's about 10%, right? So your staff might need extra help. Maybe we can give you, you know, um, workshops provided specifically for their staff, you know, specific support. So, so many different ways because, you know, it, it's always a help of, you know, one person helping another. And that's, you know, if it's our, it's our model and it's what we like to do, we are always, you know, sharing our information with others. So people can just, but just sharing our name and keeping us in mind, you know, um, it's a, it's a great way to help us out. So anyway, or, you know, you already know that you want to, you know, um, have some extra money laying around and you want to um, give it to a, an organization that does work that you feel is, is, is authentic and helpful. I'd be happy to talk to you, too. <laughs> the passion is there because it's been, you know, it, it touches me personally. Yep. I have a 25-year-old son with autism, so I understand. My family lives it every day, and we will continue to support David because he needs our support. So I know there's so many others like us, and and so that's what I want. I want the new people to feel that there's help to go out to and for those that are in the in the trenches, right? And sometimes it becomes a little difficult, and, and you have, you know, the issues with life that come along the way, and as our kids get older, like I said, needs change, and we hope to be there for them, you know, um, throughout. 
So that's why the passion is there, because it touches me in the same way that it touched so many people back, you know, when we first started, you know, this great organization. That's what I want, and that's what I would love to have always on staff, always on our board, you know, always out in our community, people that, that can share our vision and can share our need with other people. And that have heart. And have the heart. <laughs> always have a heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's really I important. That. I think if your heart is into everything that you do, it's not work. So that I look for forward to coming into the office, even if it is a crazy day, even with, you know, the aspects that happen day to day and, you know, the changes that come on. That's fine. That's part of, of what it, it should be, you know, and and it's OK. I always say, you know, we're not perfect. No one's perfect. But as an organization, I want us to help as many people as we can. We don't turn away people. So it's not like if, oh, I've met my numbers for my grant, I'm not going to help you. That's not going to happen for us. You know, it's not about the money. Yeah. It's it's about helping a family in need. And so it, it's always going to be, how can we help you? And if we can't, you know, where can I send you and find and find you, you know, that next help for sure. Yeah. There's just so much that goes into it. But I love that you were able to share everything, the nitty gritty, the pieces of what parent to parent is. And I'm so glad that you were able to come on this show. Yeah, I thank Especially because we get to have another conversation. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Melissa. I thank you for having me and helping me share, you know, a little bit more about what we do and how, you know, how we can help. Because there's a big community that needs our help. So I appreciate Definitely. always the invitation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Fadi Fadi. And now to get to know you a little bit more. Mm. I know we had some questions last time, but I want to make sure that we're, we add the Fadi piece into it. Okay. I love your nickname. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you, do you like having real plants in the house or artificial plants? I like real plants. I'm a plant person. I do not have a green thumb, so I'll power to you. <laughs> I like green plants, and they're in my office, too, and in my home, so they have to be real. Yeah. What are you, do you, if you could be an animal, would you be a land animal or a sea animal? Maybe the sea. Why not? You know, <laughs> swimming along. It's so nice to float along and <laughs> swim, so why not, right? What if you're an animal that doesn't float? No, I'm going to have to float. I can't be all <laughs> the way down there. Around. It's very dark down there in the sea. <laughs> closest to the sun. A little Get closer a little to, the, to the top. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's amazing. Have you always been a sea uh, or interested in ocean life? Well, I've lived in Miami all my life. Okay, so but everyone know what? says I that. I love the beach. I love the beach. I, th I love the okay, water. That's where I think it comes it's in. amazing. You know, I think that one of the things that we haven't explored as human as much is the depth of our seas. I mean, I'm sure there's so much out, you know, down it's there. Scary. I'll stay Very at the top. scary, though. I am going to stay to the top. I'll let others take the bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, so. I think I'm, I think you mentioned that you were a coffee person last time. I'm a big coffee okay. person. So let's go in a little bit into brands. I know there's a lot of um, conversation going around. Are you a Starbucks person, a Dunkin' person, or a local coffee shop person? I do like my Dunkin'. I do like my Dunkin'. <laughs> yeah, I do like my Dunkin'. That, yeah. Do you get like the super large cup? I just get a regular American coffee. Why are you like this? <laughs> With a little cream and a little sugar. I don't believe in iced coffees, Melissa. <laughs> That's not coffee. I know, I'm the weird one. I love iced coffee. I just love coffee, and I love coffee ice cream, and I love coffee anything. Oh, so avocado has yeah. been my latest yeah. just need. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's the sweet and the and the wake me up kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it works. It works, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was so great to have you. And now I know what I need to wake me up. Some Dunkin' not iced coffee. Not iced coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us and having Fadi and ha just getting to know parent to parent a little bit more. We are thrilled to be able to get to know her a little bit more, especially because her November event will be coming up and it'll be in just a short few months because the year has already blown us by. And so we'll see you next time on Chamber South Spotlight. Thank you.